Step one in preventing corrosion of an aiming plant is making sure you've set the steam flow rate to the reboiler correctly. Today we're going to give you four criteria which if you follow should ensure that that very important operating parameter, how much steam is going to the reboiler, is set properly. Welcome to the Experts Network. Welcome to the Experts Network. My name is Ben Spooner. I'm an engineer with Aiming Experts and today we are tackling a question that came to us from a refinery in Salt Lake City, Utah. The question is this, dear Aiming Experts, what is the best way to determine steam flow to a reboiler? Best way to determine steam flow to a reboiler. Okay, good question and an important question because if you don't do this right, you can corrode the reboiler. Okay, so let's go through this. I'm going to give you guys four criteria and all four of them need to be monitored in order to make sure you've set the steam flow rate properly, but they kind of go in order. The first is this, a ratio, a ratio of steam to aiming. The most common ratio we see around industry is using one pound of steam per gallon of aiming. So you take your aiming, a lot of times it's in gallons per minute, we'll make it in gallons per hour, and you're gonna use that amount of pounds per hour of steam to your reboiler, a very good starting point. If you're in metric, you're gonna use around 110 kilograms of steam for every cubic meter of aiming. These ratios give a really good starting point for the operator. It's something you can use, especially when the aiming plant is just being started up, maybe a brand new plant or after a turnaround, and you tell the, re uh, the operator to turn on the reboiler, this gives them a good Good starting point. Some plants just look at the ratio and that's it, but that leaves room for error if you if you ignore some other aspects of the aiming plant, such as the rich loading, the heat stable salt level, uh, the desired lean loading that you need to get. So you need to look at more than just the ratio. The number two thing we want to watch is the overhead temperature, the overhead temperature of the regenerator. So the temperature that the steam carrying with it, all of the acid gas, uh, all of this nasty stuff you don't want in the aiming, such as hydrocarbons and ammonia, all of that needs to leave the top. And the way we know it's leaving is by that overhead temperature. So before we enter the uh, overhead condenser and cool it down, you're gonna have a target temperature. Um, Normally the uh, uh, engineer of the system has determined the de desired reflux ratio or stripping ratio and has come up with a temperature to give to the operators. That temperature is normally around 105 Celsius or around 215 Fahrenheit. Uh, certainly can be higher than that, but not very often do we see it lower than that. All right, and again, that's just making sure we're getting all of the acid gas and contamination out of the amine so that by the time the amine flows down to the bottom tray and then into the reboiler, there's no more acid gas left. We wanna make sure 95% of the acid gas that entered the top of that regenerator is gone from the amine before it enters the reboiler. If acid gas gets into the reboiler, the reboiler will drive it out of the amine which is not what it's designed for, and this is what causes corrosion of the reboiler. So we have the ratio to aiming, the overhead temperature, and then if you wanna go old school, which those of you guys been to our seminar know we love to do that in aiming experts, the old school method of determining steam to the reboiler is the operator would look at the reflux flow. All right, you go back 1930, 1940, 50, there's no such thing as a DCS screen. You didn't just glance at a computer and know the overhead temperature. Nobody knew the overhead temperature, all right? You knew the reflux flow, because there's a flow meter by your reflux pump, all right? The rule of thumb that was established in our industry for about the first 40 or 50 years of aiming plant operation was to make sure you had enough steam to the reboiler to make, ensure your reflux flow equal to about 10% of the rich amine flow, all right? So another ratio, reflux flow equal 10% of the amine flow. Now guys, this criteria was based on MEA plants. MEA, a primary amine that does require a higher reflux ratio than most modern amines use today. For those of you that are on MDEA or DEA, you likely only need your reflux flow rate to equal about 5% of the rich amine flow. 
all right? But that's a third criteria you can use to just double check you've got that steam flow rate to the reboiler set properly. The final thing that we're gonna give you guys right here, lean loading, lean loading of the amine, but be careful with this one. Some plants we've been to make the mistake of only looking at the lean loading. If it's low enough, they don't touch a thing. If it's too high, they increase steam to the reboiler. And although, okay, you can argue that uh, the lean loading does give you a yes or no answer as to whether you regenerated the amine or not when all was said and done, it does not tell you where you regenerated. Was the regeneration in the tower the way it's supposed to? Or did you regenerate some in the reboiler? And are you corroding the reboiler as a result? That's why just looking at lean loading, that's an incomplete uh, detail. It's, it's not enough information to say whether you've set your steam flow rate properly. Okay, the advantage in looking at the lean loading is it makes sure that your operating conditions are set properly, reading properly, and that you don't have something weird going on in the regenerator like channeling, foaming, uh, contamination of the amine, binding H2S or CO2 into that amine, maybe have some problem in the steam flow to the reboiler itself, some non-condensables in the steam preventing uh, the steam from condensing the way it should in the reboiler tubes. So it's not that you should ignore the lean loading by any stretch but you don't want to use it solely as uh, a criteria for measuring steam to the reboiler so those are four basic things that you should be looking at when determining steam flow to the reboiler i hope this helped you guys out a little bit if you have any questions or comments of course leave them in the comment section below please guys click on the subscribe link to our youtube channel so you never miss an episode of the experts network and we'll see you right back here again next week